Hello everyone and welcome to another video and what is another episode of reviewing your gaming rigs. Now in this series we take a look at some of your user submitted systems. I give you any upgrade advice if there is any to give, but in general I just enjoy admiring your handiwork. So we're going to jump straight in here. I apologise if I just start choking at any point in this video. I have a very sore throat this morning, but let's get into it and start with our first system here from joe.holdsworth underscore on Instagram. Now they have sent me their small form factor HP8300 system. I love these small form factor systems. They've added a GTX 1050 Ti to the build. That is an ideal way to go. Those low profile 1050 Ti's are a perfect match for these systems, especially when they feature an i5 35, 70 and 16 gigs of RAM like yours. The power supplies are also okay, I find. You won't often see a six pin connector in systems like this. So a card like that is ideal. And they should both work very well together. I do believe they support i7s, I think. Um, so if you wanted to upgrade to that, then you could do so. Though you won't really be gaining much on that socket with an i7 in combination with the 1050 Ti, unless you plan on doing uh, more CPU intensive things. Now they've also sent me details of another system here. Uh, just replace the PC now, oh, but I'm yet to replace the new one. The current specs are a Core i5, 7400, 16 gigs of DDR4, a 240 gig SSD and two one terabyte storage drives. There's also a three gig 1060 in there. Now in terms of that build, again, I think those components work well with each other. The i5 7400, Still seems fairly capable. I think it is a four core, four threaded chip. So there may be some instances where it may struggle, but in combination with the three gig 1060, it should do okay. After all, you could always go up to an i7 on that respective socket and then upgrade the graphics card too. If that's something you wanted to do later down the line. Our next submission comes from a thick underscore speco on uh, Instagram. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I am terrible with pronunciations. <laughs> there we go. Now they have sent me their Ryzen 5 2600 rig comprising of a 1660 6 gigabyte OC card, 16 gigs of 3600 megahertz RAM, oh, clocked at 3466 because of the motherboard, an MSI Mortar Titanium motherboard, and a Seasonic 650 watt power supply. Now I notice you mentioned that you plan on upgrading a little down the line uh, for a water cooler, but you're not sure what else. My advice would be to invest in a better air cooler as opposed to a liquid cooler. Maybe I'm just biased, I'm not a huge fan of liquid cooling. Quiet PC here in the UK is a good website to look at um, for CPU coolers because they list all of them and tell you their noise rating, things like that. In terms of the system itself though, well, I think it looks very good. The RGB RAM is a nice touch. I actually do really like these standard Ryzen coolers. Um, I understand they can get a little bit noisy though. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good looking system overall, to be honest. Anything else that can be improved? No, not really. I just think if you wanna upgrade that cooler, stick with air but that's my personal opinion. You've also got a decent amount of fans in that rig as well, so that's always a, a nice touch. Now next up we have a submission from Adam.Lanes on Instagram here, submitting their Ryzen 3 1200 rig with a GTX 980 Ti and 32 gigs of DDR4 2666 memory. Now I love the look of the inside of this PC, the GTX 980 Ti, it's the reference card. I notice I love those reference cards. They're subtle, they look great in any system and in combination with the Ryzen 3, well you say it has to go in your comments here, but personally I think they're still decent enough chips, especially when paired with that card. Again, four cores, four threads, maybe an upgrade to a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, if you can find them. Um, there is also a new variant of the Ryzen 3 1200 coming out, an AF version of that, which should offer slightly better frame rates as well. I wouldn't recommend going from a Ryzen 3 1200 to a 1200 AF, but a Ryzen 5 1600 would be a nice step up and still work very well with the 980 Ti, which is still a very nice card. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but is that also a picture of David Bowie in the front of the PC there? That's a nice touch, an absolute music legend. Nice setup overall there. I, I like the shot of the room there. I think that looks awesome. 
Now again, we have another system that features a 980 Ti. Wonderful used cards now. They can be a bit harder to find and a little expensive on the used market, but if you can find one, I still think they are fantastic. The Tank Tom 93 here has paired his with an i5 2500K, 16 gigs of DDR3 in it, and actually the golden sample edition of the GTX 980 Ti, so even better. I really enjoy builds like this. The i5 2500K 980 Ti to me are both two of my favorite components, so I think you've done a great job with this rig, and may these components bring you many more months, hopefully even years, of gaming. It seems like one of those chips that it's just going to go on and on and on. I absolutely love the look of this system from Hooray's underscore YT. Um, this features an i5-9600KF. Now that's a chip I do not see many people use. Very underrated, but it can be quite expensive too. This is paired with an RTX 2060 Founders Edition card. Lovely looking cards. 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz DDR4, an SSD, one terabyte HDD, and of course an RGB keyboard and mouse. I like the way you've stuck the r 9 x in the picture there for decoration as well. Again, that is a great old card. You can find those for pretty decent used prices to be honest and they can still do very well in some games. Now the next user here, nicknamed Lambo603, has sent me their very nice looking rig here. This comprises of an i7 7700K at 4.5 gigahertz with a GTX 1080 Ti, 16 gigs of DDR4. Now this is a very, very nice rig. The i7 7700Ks are still very capable CPUs. Again, they can be very expensive to find and if you're thinking of buying one now, I would say don't buy the i5 9400F instead because you'll see similar performance. The 1080 Ti, also a very expensive used card, but in combination with the 7700, it still does a fantastic job. NVIDIA probably regret ever <laughs> releasing that because people still use them today and they're probably thinking, can you please just upgrade, buy one of our new cards because they still hold up very well, even with modern GPUs. And it's just one of those things that's going to go on for a very long time. Oh no, I've just seen the message. Your motherboard's died and you are thinking of swapping to a Ryzen 5 3600 and Asus X470 Prime Pro. Good choice. You've said yourself, yeah, gaming, it won't make much difference, but CAD for school purposes, yes, the CPU power of the Ryzen 5 3600 is unreal. How AMD made a chip so good for such a low price is beyond me, but there we go. A very nice rig, and again, the 1080 Ti will work very nicely with the 3600. Okay, so when Ethan underscore 7084 originally sent me their rig, it did feature a core i5-4440, um, eight gigs of RAM, which they upgraded to 16 gigs, a GTX 960, which was upgraded to an RX 570, and a 40 450 watt PSU, which was then upgraded to a 600 watt unit. The system has been upgraded once more. They've swapped it out for a Ryzen 5 2600. A nice upgrade there. You'll see a pretty nice difference in both CPU intensive tasks and games. I notice your cable management is a little messy, but you've said it yourself, the case doesn't really um, do much in terms of aiding that. So it's inevitable really. Maybe just cable tie a few more cables together there keep things a little bit neater, but it really isn't the worst job I've seen of cable management. I have seen some horrific things. I notice you say that the i5-4440 started to struggle in Battlefield 5 and upgrading to the Ryzen was one of your best decisions. Yeah, I understand why that would happen. Um, four cores and four threads. Certain games, as I mentioned before, like Battlefield 5, it's a very CPU intensive title, so I can understand why you may experience some issues with that. You know, the RX 570 as well is still a card that I do recommend when people ask me for a cheap-ish card that can still handle games with relative ease. So it's a nice combination there. Now there's a great story behind this next PC build. Kyle left the chat here, submitted their system. Uh, hey, this isn't my PC. It's one that me and my girlfriend Sarah and our friend Lewis have built for our buddy Nathan's birthday. Happy birthday, Nathan, because I see you've got your PC now in the picture at the very bottom of this post. It features an FX 6300, RX 484 gig, and two four gig sticks of DDR3 memory. I think that's a great looking system and a great entry level build to get into PC gaming. <laughs> I've just noticed this photo <laughs> as well. 
had to do it. Now he's gonna be going from a cheap old Acer laptop, has a processor that's clocked at 1.9 gigahertz, and would run games like Minecraft at 10 to 15 frames per second. So yes, that machine is going to prove to be a very nice upgrade over that old laptop indeed. Great birthday surprise, and if I was getting a PC for my birthday to replace an old Acer laptop, I would be over the moon. So now we have a couple of submissions from Twitter, the first being from Mechaness. I hope that's again pronounced correctly. Um, I thought my, if you could say, rig <laughs> would be a funny submission to reviewing your gaming rigs. I've had this laptop since 2013, but since around 2016 the GT630M became too weak to run games. Uh, I didn't have enough cash to build a new PC, so I decided to upgrade the GPU. I think you've done a great job there of adding an external GPU to that laptop. You know, the processor's actually still quite good. The G580 from Lenovo with an i7-3630QM, still quite capable, uh, especially when paired with that 12 gigs of RAM. We've got a cooling pad under there as well, always necessary when gaming, if you don't like your laptop to overheat. Some salt literally some salt on the table. It's starting to sound more like a Gordon Ramsay recipe. <laughs> Can't fault it. Nice bit of innovation, bit of DIY there to get an old laptop working again. And the 950 is certainly better than a 630M. I love seeing DIY sort of projects like this. Okay, finally from L underscore Coronel on Twitter. Sent me their rig here. A Ryzen 3 2200G, 4 gig RX 570, an A320 board, 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz DDR4 and overall I think that looks very nice Sorry for the bad camera quality. I have a potato phone. Don't worry about it I know Twitter and that compresses images anyway, but I love the look of that system the all red lighting going on there It looks very nice the Ryzen 3 2200 G and RX 570 are a great pairing I've seen many builds featuring these two and they always seem to work quite well. If you want to get into PC gaming, don't have that big of a budget, then they are an ideal combination. But yeah, that PC looks very good. Plenty of fans there. Thank you for your submission and thank you to everyone who submitted. I plan to go back and check out some of the older messages. I have messages that have been building up from a few weeks ago, maybe even a few months ago too. I get hundreds a day. So <laughs> yeah, I do my best to try and uh, get back to all of them, but I'm gonna go back and take a look at some of the older messages first. So if you submit your rigs now on Instagram or Twitter, then it might be again another month or two before I get round to them, but I will always be looking out for your submissions to feature in the videos. But I'm gonna stop there because my voice <laughs> is going. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.